all of the painful sensations that we feel are processed by the brain. No exceptions. But what happens in the case of individuals with chronic pain? And why is chronic pain sometimes called TMS? This is what I'm going to explain in this video. You see, our brain is also the seat of our emotions and memories. And so sometimes our emotions affect how much pain we actually experience and whether or not we get chronic pain at all. The doctor of rehabilitation medicine, Dr. John Sarno, was one of the first people to notice that repressed emotions in particular can lead to intense chronic symptoms, ranging from back and neck pain to sciatica pain and fibromyalgia, as well as dozens of other pain syndromes that are hard to treat. Dr. Sarno came up with the term tension myoneural syndrome, TMS, also known as mind-body syndrome, to refer to chronic conditions that result due to repressed emotions and or chronic stress. According to Dr. Sarno, the more unaware we are of these emotions, the more likely we are to experience them as pain in the body. Interestingly, there are certain personality traits that also make us more prone to developing TMS pain, because they make us more likely to carry around negative or anxious thoughts. These include, for example, being a people pleaser and therefore constantly being fearful of conflict or judgment. People pleasers tend to put others first, denying several of their own needs in the process. They not only live in fear of conflict or criticism, but they also carry around a certain amount of repressed anger, all due to the fact that they are repressing and denying their own needs and what they really want. To keep things simple, if you have personality traits that tend to create anxiety, self-neglect, or pressure in your life, such as tendencies to put high demands of, on yourself, or the tendency to worry about the worst case scenario in every situation, the more likely you are to experience TMS pain. All these negative emotions or stressors can actually affect your physical body in various ways. For instance, Chronic stress can lead to extreme muscle tightness, as well as increased pain sensitivity. And so, TMS pain is not just in your head. It is a physical consequence that's due to an emotional cause. Something is actually taking place on both an emotional and a physical level. But that's not even the end of the story. When we feel pain, both TMS pain and non-TMS pain, such as a pain from an injury, the way we react and process the pain also determines how likely we are to keep re-experiencing it and how intense it will be. Those who suffer traumatic injuries may keep feeling pain long after an injury has healed. This is because the brain remembers the pain of that injury and can more easily reproduce it under certain circumstances, especially if the individual fears its reoccurrence. Similarly, those who have TMS pain tend to develop chronic pain if they react to the pain with fear, helplessness, or frustration. So you may ask, how can you not be scared of pain or at least frustrated? You can work on lessening fear levels by working with mind-body techniques and by embarking on what we call TMS work. TMS work can be divided into two parts. Number one is gaining more self-awareness about your emotional state. This involves examining the levels of anxiety in your life and the sources of worry, rage, threat, or general life dissatisfaction that may be leading to chronic stress or repressed emotions. In this way, you will start to link painful episodes with emotional events, and you may even uncover certain repressed or suppressed emotions that have been causing you great distress. Techniques like journaling, self-reflection, and other emotional release exercises can help you get closer to the source of your emotional pain and even give you ideas on how to tweak your life so that you can reduce or eliminate these stressors. One such idea being to learn how to relax more and reduce pressure in your life. Number two is learning how to react with less negative emotion towards the symptoms themselves. This can be helpful even for people whose symptoms are not 100% TMS or who are not sure that their symptoms are 100% TMS. As I explained at the beginning of this video, all pain is filtered by the brain, regardless of whether it's TMS pain or acute pain. 
When we respond to the pain with fear, we are essentially firing a danger signal, which is reaffirming that there is a threat. Because the brain wants to protect us from further danger, it is more likely to fire the pain response in situations which it deems to be dangerous. In people with chronic pain, the brain may learn to interpret day-to-day -day activities like sitting down, walking, showering, typing, or even playing sports as dangerous. And so, when the individual engages in these activities, or even entertains the prospect of engaging in such activities, the pain response may be automatically fired. The solution to this is to train the brain that actually these activities are safe. This usually requires a paced approach to avoid overwhelming oneself with fear and doubt, which are the biggest enemies in this case. But before embarking on any of these steps, you need to rule out serious medical conditions like cancer or infection. Once you've taken the necessary tests, you can also take self-assessments to look for indicators that your pain is actually TMS. About 90% of chronic pain and symptoms actually classify as TMS. And so if you think it's unlikely in your case, then think again. Even though you might have been told that you have a herniated disc, degeneration, arthritis, and any other structural imperfection in your body, this doesn't mean that these imperfections are actually to blame for the pain. In most cases, they are incidental findings. You can arrive at this conclusion if the pain moves around, or if the pain varies in intensity from day to day or within the same day. These variations indicate that there is something else at play. If you have multiple symptoms, or if your pain moves around or is bilateral, you have a case for TMS. There are additional indicators, by the way. If you are blaming pain on an old injury that happened more than six months ago, and you have no visible rupture or damage, then you have a case for TMS. Today, research is finally uncovering the truth. For instance, several studies have shown that herniated discs are almost as likely to be found in people without chronic pain as in people with chronic pain. This shows that in most cases, disc herniations are actually harmless. Just like white hairs. If this resonates with you, it may be time to give TMS work a try. Because, honestly, it might change your life, just like it changed the life of hundreds of Dr. Sarno's patients and thousands of his readers and followers, including myself. I suffered from excruciating sciatica, piriformis pain, shoulder pain, and nerve pain for months, and I was told that I had fibromyalgia. But within six weeks of learning about TMS and applying TMS principles into practice, I got rid of all my symptoms. Not only that, but I also resumed my favorite sport, which is rock climbing, and which doctors had told me that I would never be able to do again. If you'd like to learn more about TMS and how to recover from chronic pain, check out the resources on my website, www.painoutsidethebox.com. Especially my pain-free breakthrough program, which will guide you and teach you how to apply various exercises and mind body techniques to your personal situation. Thanks so much for listening, guys, and I wish you an inspiring healing journey. Take care. Bye-bye.